Tom, let's start with you. What uh, charges have been laid? Uh, basically here, it's uh, four primary charges, Ali, and it has to do with two counts of conspiracy tied to uh, that foreign donation scheme that you laid out. Also has to do with falsifying records and falsifying records to the FEC. When you make a political contribution, if you're going to make it in, in with respect to a pro-Trump super PAC, if you're going to say that it's coming from a specific company, an energy company that these two people started, it in fact has to come from there. It can't come from a loan or some other... Uh, monetary means, which is what they're charged with here. And basically, uh, what the U.S. Attorney's Office has laid out through the course of this grand jury indictment today is a scheme to take money from a foreign national who they don't identify and inject it at various points into the U.S. political system. Uh, in particular, there was an effort here to, uh, and, and they only identify this person as Congressman One, but the reporting of myself and my colleague Joe Valaket, uh, we've been told that this uh, Congressman is, in fact, Pete Sessions, who was in Congress. Uh, recently was not reelected from the Dallas, Texas area, uh, basically wanted to provide money to him. They maxed out their contributions to him in an effort to see if he could lobby for the removal of the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine. This is something that's been in the news a lot. You've been speaking a lot about as it relates to the whistleblower complaint and some of the more recent conversations involving Giuliani's involvement in Ukraine. So that's kind of the, the, the broad overview of what these two are up to. And of course, Ali, this is something that the FBI and the Department of Justice has been speaking out about a lot over the last several months. Uh, we've talked about it with Russian interference. Now we're talking about it with other countries interfering. And the assistant director of the FBI, Bill Sweeney, talked about that today as far as their focus and their intention to go after people. And we can take a listen uh, who are involved with these type of donations. Uh, Ken Delaney, let's talk Campaign about oh, sorry. Finance, finance laws exist for a reason. The American people expect and deserve an election process that has not been corrupted by the influence of foreign interests, and the public has a right to know the true source of campaign contributions. Laws make up the fabric of who we are as a nation. We gather evidence, we collect facts, and we will act on them when appropriate. As Jeff mentioned, our investigation will continue. And I think that last point there, Ali, that this investigation is continuing is an important one. We know that these individuals that were uh, charged today made other campaign contributions that were not referenced here, including co campaign contributions uh, to the House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. Now, there's no indication uh, at this point that there's any sort of wrongdoing with respect to those donations and certainly no indication at all uh, that uh, Congressman McCarthy uh, has anything to do with this or is involved in any sort of investigation, Ali. All right, Ken, uh, Tom has laid out the facts quite well. Try and draw a picture for uh, our viewers here about what the connection is between these uh, men who've been arrested, Rudy Giuliani, and his efforts on behalf of Donald Trump and Donald Trump himself. So what we have here, Ali, at a minimum, is another example of people acting on Donald Trump's behalf who have been accused of corruption. It was just over a year ago that Paul Manafort, Trump's former campaign uh, manager, was convicted of fraud in this courthouse behind me. And in fact, one of his lawyers was representing these two men in the appearance today. But um, it, it seems to go much further beyond that, Ali, because these two men were being represented by Rudy Giuliani. He has said that publicly um, in their in endeavors in Ukraine. And they seem to be wearing two hats with regard to Ukraine. They had made these contributions and cultivated political influence and were introducing Rudy Giuliani to Ukrainians who Rudy was then lobbying to investigate the Bidens and pursue other investigations that Donald Trump wanted. And at the same time, Parnas and Fruman were pursuing private business deals, in particular a natural gas deal. Um, and they were trying to get rid of the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, who apparently was standing in their way from a business perspective. They were telling everyone in Ukraine that they had the power to do that. She then was recalled to Washington. Um, they made a proposal to replace the CEO of the Ukrainian gas company. So what Congress wants to know from these people is obviously, you know, what did they talk to Giuliani about in terms of pressuring these Ukrainian officials? But also, what was the nature of their private business dealings? Was there any connection between Rudy Giuliani and those private business dealings? And, and what role did that play in their efforts to pressure Ukraine. So, and then lastly, um, there's a question of who paid for all this. It, it, Rudy Giuliani has not really answered who is paying for his travels to Ukraine, his meetings in Europe with these Ukrainian officials. These men were paying Rudy as a lawyer. We don't know the circumstances of that, though, but that's certainly what 
um, federal investigators and congressional investigators are going to be finding out, Ali. Uh, Ari Melber, this is all really interesting grist for those of us who are journalists who like to look into these details, curiosities about the things that Ken's talking about, who's paying for this, and these possibly shady dealings. But really, for most people, this is only going to be relevant if it is l relevant in a larger context, the context in which we are looking at Donald Trump. Fair. Look, you ever wonder what a criminal foreign policy looks like? Here it is. This is the prosecutors in New York, who, by the way, are appointed by the Trump administration, saying you've got people out here allegedly committing crimes and funneling illegal money to a Trump super PAC. Boom. Headline number one. Right. Then you've got individuals who are currently in demand as impeachment witnesses in the Ukraine scandal for Donald Trump. They just got arrested. Boom. Headline number two. And then three. What do they know about Rudy Giuliani and his dealings with the White House? under significant pressure, as we've seen other people, mm -hmm. like Mr. Manafort, who said he'd never flip, and flip. Mr. Gates, who said he'd, ne he'd never flip initially, flip. Mr. Flynn, who was very loyal to Donald Trump, flip. Mr. Cohen, who's in jail right now, flipped. Right. Do these two associates of Rudy Giuliani flip? That's question and headline number three. So there is a lot here right. uh, that terrifies people at the White House. Is there enough in here to allow you, and you are a lawyer, to be able to say, I know what this narrative could look like. In other words, do we know what let's we know they had their hands in a lot of stuff. We know they're involved in Rudy Giuliani. Yeah. We know Rudy Giuliani Giuliani's involved in a lot of stuff. And we know some of that connects to Donald Trump. But it's it, can you get from A to F? Great question. Ali Velshi, known for great questions. Thanks, sir. Uh, I'll answer as fairly as I can, which is two theories of the case. Here's one that would be good for the White House. A theory of the case that those men you see on your screen are accused of these crimes. They're innocent until proven guilty, but if convicted, they did these bad things. They associated with people, but that's as far as it went, right. meaning the bad apples defense, and that's it, mm -hmm. okay? The other theory of the case is that the people on the screen that you see now and other individuals close to Trump and Rudy Giuliani did know about the extent of this, that there was a larger criminal plot to take over U.S. foreign policy, not for the benefit of the United States— not for ideological reasons, but rather for criminal reasons, for abusive power reasons, to get rid of anyone who wouldn't play ball mm -hmm. in an abusive power to try to get foreign meddling into the U.S. elections, to try to do in 2020 what Bob Mueller found didn't happen to a criminal degree in 2016. What I'm talking about is a theory of the case where other pieces fall into play and there's a provable 2020 election conspiracy. That's got to make Rudy Giuliani nervous. It would go, uh, it would go without mention to add... I'm, it's kind of obvious, but, you know, Rudy Giuliani used to have the job of the top prosecutor yeah. in New York. Today, the top prosecutor in New York just indicted two of his close associates in the middle of the Ukraine scandal yeah. who were also wanted for impeachment testimony. So he, Rudy's got to be wondering. He knows how SDNI works. The flipping that I mentioned with Mr. Yeah. Cohen, that happened in this office. Right. He knows the screws are going to come down on right. these people to tell us everything you know. Because this is, a, at the moment, a campaign finance uh, indictment. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting in that these two guys, and by the way, if you're ever trying to get away from the law, just buy a return ticket. It makes it a whole lot less suspicious. These two guys were on a one-way ticket to get out of the country. And there's some uh, inference there that uh, maybe yeah. there's more to this. Ali, some people... Some people prefer spontaneous travel. <laughs> travel, exactly. Do, do we think that this is what this looks like? But the, the, there seems to be emphasis. Tom Winter made the point that the, the prosecutors today said this is a continuing investigation. Right. And I, I think that remains open. Now, in fairness to everybody, uh, based on the public information, these were not fugitives from the law. They were not fleeing from a new indictment. This was not an O.J. Bronco. Uh, they but, were just leaving the country. But they were leaving the country. Which, which people and, can do. And and they were right in that gray zone between not fugitives, in fairness right. to them. Right. But not leaving under normal and neutral circumstances. They were Including already the fact that they had been subpoenaed by they were the facing house. these requests from yeah. from the House. They knew they were in demand. They knew they were tied to Rudy right. Giuliani. And in that forum, they then leave. So legally, we're not saying that that is a, a criminal act. No one's saying that this was mm -hmm. a, a fugitive from justice. But as you say, it does look bad. So in fairness, if that's as bad as it gets and this is everything that SDNY has, you say it may have stopped with these individuals. But you have the money sloshing into mm. the Trump super PAC. You have the removal of the ambassador. You have the House openly looking at this as an existential question for the yeah. president. So this definitely adds to the quantum of evidence today. Often a return ticket costs less than a one-way ticket. Just a little bit of travel information. Are you bringing your finance knowledge I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying one-way tickets generally don't make sense <laughs> in life. Criminal or not. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.